Jacques and I are both vegetarians. But we eat meat too. Well, we eat everything. Yes, including vegetables and a lot of vegetables. But you have to treat your vegetables well, respect them, you have to season them properly. And know how to cook them. Right. We have a great group of them for you today. We're going to start out with a stuffed whole head of cabbage. This is a recipe that you find in practically every culture, I think particularly in middle Europe. Yes, and here we have a Savoy cabbage and your regular cabbage, you can actually use either one, right? No, but the Savoy is prettier. The I'll Savoy get this is one out right. of our way. And one way that Julia does it, I had never done it before. Well, I read about it. It's you not read my invention. Oh, okay. And it works. What you do, you take the core of that cabbage, as I'm doing now, and conventionally what you have to do is to remove all of those leaves and to blanch them. And you blanch them, of course, in uh, salted boiling water. But what we did here, what did we do? What we did here, we put it in the freezer, and this is frozen solid, isn't it? Yes, hot frozen solid. And as you can see, at that point, the leaves are still very frozen, kind of separate like this, so they are kind of blanched. So that saves you one whole step, because it was an awful nuisance boiling them and putting the leaves off yes. as you did it. Those separate, but it gets very hard as you get toward the center. So we have another one here which has been defrosting. While you take off the leaves, I'll start making the stuffing. The stuffing is going to have chopped vegetables and a bit of meat and some rice. And this all have to be sauteed first. So I'm using some vegetable oil, heating that up. Then we're going to have onion. See those here now. You can undo all those leaves after it's been defrosted. That really is wonderful yeah, goes, how well it, it works, terrific. isn't it? What I'm going to do also is to take the center of that cabbage and I'll give you yes, up I to can... about here because that part here you can't really, the leaves are too small and that we're going to use in the stuffing. So I'm keeping all of that stuff here. That's good. And I'll give you that. That's the center. Yeah, that's the center oh, for your I'm stuffing. Sorry, and then we're going to stuff all of those leaves. Well, we're going to form it so that it looks as though we're a whole cabbage. So you will think, oh, there's that cabbage. That doesn't look very nice. And you start okay. cutting it up, and you find all of this stuffing in it. And this is one of these recipes where you can really do what you want. You don't have to do what we do. You can have mushrooms Absolutely. or who knows what. And then when the cabbage is stuffed, we're going to kind of braise it. So on this side, I'm going to start a braising liquid. And for that, I will have also a little bit of celery. Well, that's about three or four cloves of garlic. Okay. And once cooked, it loses its violence. I'll put in a bit of... You don't like violent garlic. A little caraway seeds there. Can that's about it? half a teaspoon, I would say. It is good, yes. Okay. Is that for me or for you? No, that's for me. Well, I'm that's going for to you when you braise the cabbage. But this all has to be nice and soft so it will give out its flavors. Well, I have some stuff here if you want. So I'm putting the carrot, celery. I will also put a little bit of oil in mine. I haven't put any salt and pepper in mine. Salt and pepper, I'll yeah. put in some white pepper. The onion. Now, there is two parts to that recipe which look the same but are different. The first part that Julia is doing there is ready to go inside the leaf, mixed with the meat and the rice. And that second part 
is for the whole cabbage to be braised or cooked back on top of this. So this is a flavoring base, if you want. We're not doing offensive vegetarian stuff, cabbage, but we could perfectly well. You don't need you could. meat in it at all. No. What you put in instead? Mushrooms, I think. We could, we could stuff it with mushroom rice, with bulgur, with uh, any type yes. of uh, mm -hmm. leftover pasta would be very good. And oh, inside, well. we're going to put some tomato. Those tomatoes have been dipped in boiling water so that the skin come out very easily. If you want to blanch them, if you don't want to blanch them, it's fine. Cut them in half and mm -hmm. press out the seed. I How need many? about three cups of this. You always do this, practically always when you're adding tomato, is to get that extra juice out of which you can take, keep for something else, but you don't want you're stuffing all the watery with tomato juices. Or even if you don't have it, a can of two tomatoes would be perfectly yes, that would fine. Be perfectly in it. all right. And for me, I have about three cups of tomato here. This is your sauce, still. This is the base, yes. <laughs> the sauce, a bit of salt, pepper in it. I'm going to cover this, and just like yours, mine is going to have to cook for a few minutes. Well, this is just about ready. It's thoroughly cooked, and the liquid is mostly evaporated. All right, into the bowl. If you had more time, of course, you could let that cool off a little bit. But in our case here, we're going to put the rice in it. We got about we one had, and a half, two cups we had, Yes, we had one cup of raw rice, which gave you a, about two cups of cooked rice. I think that's going to have to be done with your impeccably clean fingers. Do you think we should saute a little bit and taste it to make taste sure? taste it? Well, we could do that, too. You want to be sure that it's wonderfully, wonderfully seasoned. When you get it mixed up, give me a little bit. i give a you a little bit. bit of this. You ready well, for it? Mm-hmm. What we are going to do now is to reform a whole cabbage. And to this, I think one of the easiest ways is actually to do it on a piece of aluminum foil. We'll start by kind of reforming the top of our cabbage. Now, here you are, Jack. Want to test it? I think that's good. I think it can take a dash more salt, so what we can do, we can season as we go along here. Doesn't need much, I don't think. No? OK. You'd oh. never know there was that much garlic in, in it. This. So what we do, we put a first layer of meat, rice, stuffing here. You want to give me a hand? And we try to put... It the, looks so the, limp and funny. Yeah, the, story, the outside it? of the rib going back in that shape, right? I need to put at least another layer here. You got a lot of stuffing there. I have a lot of stuffing. We're going to do a big cabbage. Here we are. You can oh. do this alone, but it's better with two people, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Always better to cook with your family and friends. Here we have, I have a third layer here. That's it. Here, we, we're using everything. Okay. I mean, actually, we could reform it like this in the shape of the cabbage, and this is good mm -hmm. with this. And I think another good idea, too, is actually not to have that much aluminum foil so the juice of the cabbage can mix in there, you know, run, instead of being totally mm -hmm. covered, I think. That's a good idea, isn't it? And of course, we're going to cook that upside down this way, reforming it like a large cabbage. So I have my vegetable stew that's cooking here. I'm going to put that right on top in the middle here. I'm going to put a, about a cup of white wine here and half a cup or three quarter of a cup of stock here. We bring then all it... these juices are going to mingle together. Yes. We we'll have to bring it to a boil on top of the stove, then we put it into the oven. Here we are. Here. What's the oven at? 375. And now we just so have to wait. Simmer. Wait and have a glass of wine, right? Yes. Good. Well, I think it's cooked. We'll bring that there. Right behind you. Well, that was about two hours for that yeah, big one. Yeah, for the big yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Watch out, this is hot. Now, how are you going to get it out of the pan? <clears throat> well, I'm going to 
get it with one of your beautiful spatula. That's, that's beautiful. I think that should be fine. That's fine. Smell. I think we'll serve it without the... Without... So don't forget to remove it. And it's a good thing, you see, that I did not go completely underneath. So that will come out easy because... Mm -hmm. Look at that. No, you have some... Yes, we have some extra like sauce. That. Extra sauce like that, a little bunch of parsley on top. Uh, isn't that beautiful? Well, let's see how she serves. Yes, let's see how she serves. That's another thing. Okay, I'm going to cut a, a wedge right here. Look at hmm. that, beautiful. And then a little sauce on top. You want to be generous with your portion there because this is good stuff, right? Here we are. We're going to now taste it. This is really a great man course. You have asbestos smell. Yeah, I clinch my teeth a lot. Mmm. Good. It was a very nice dish. Especially that taste of caraway seed is delicious. Mm. Now we're going to do a classic dish. Cauliflower au gratin. It's the cauliflower is cooked and then it's arranged in a baking dish and covered with a delicious cream cheese sauce or right. cheese cream sauce. So what you do here, all you take is the core and you can even keep that for soup. And at that point, I put that upside down with a little bit of water in there so it kind of steam and boil mm -hmm. at the same time, which is what Easy I have cooking. here. Yeah, and it's, yeah, that's it. It's cooked, Julia. Mm -hmm. okay. So we can start on the sauce. This Good. is the classic bechamel. I'm going to make about three cups of sauce. So I need about three tablespoons of butter. And then it's going to have flour in it. Uh, I think it's essential that the flour and butter cook together about two minutes to uh -huh. cook the flour. You want to put in three tablespoons of plain all-purpose flour. One, two, three. Yes, you can go a good tablespoon per cup of liquid, and you'll have a nice creamy Not too sauce. Thick. You want to cook that for a little while? I'll cook that for a little while. Well, during that time, I may start on those vegetables here. Just to show you, we have turnips and carrot. And in that case here, we turn the turnips and carrot. And what you have to do is to cut each of your turnips into equal pieces, and each of your carrot into equal pieces too. And then after, we turn them, although you could use them this way. That is, with the point of a knife, you turn them into a little bit of a football shape. Here we are. You know, you do a couple like that, and we keep everything. You keep the trimming, you know, for soup or other things, so you don't throw out anything. And we do the same thing with the turnips. In that case here, I did not peel the turnips, so you wouldn't want to keep the shape, but you want them to have a nice, all equal shape. While he's doing that, I want you to look at this. This is the flour and butter for the roux. You want it to froth and foam for about two minutes, and that cooks the flour so you don't have a pasty sauce. And if it won't spread out nicely, add a little bit more butter. But I think this is ready now. OK. We'll so what we'll do now, heat. I'm going to take, this is cooked, and I have a little bit of liquid around. We're going to use that liquid in the white sauce over there. So I put the lid this way. I think before you do that, I have hot milk here. I'm going to put, in put a bit of milk, a in bit of milk first, okay. stirring it around. Getting nice and thick. All right. So I'll add this to you. That's enough. OK. Go. And that gives you the taste of the cauliflowers. And we want to stir this around vigorously. And during that time, I will remove that cooked cauliflower uh, oop, to the gratin dish here. I could give you a little more of that juice here. Good, I could use a little more. Oh, OK. Go here ahead. Is. You have salt and white pepper and now here. Now, because you carefully cooked your flour and butter together, you don't need to simmer it a great deal. After it's brought up to the boil, there's a little white pepper, some salt. Let's have a little tiny bit of nutmeg, Jack. OK. An itty bit. If you have a whole nutmeg like this, you can use a, a little cheese grater or you can use the side of a knife to scrape it like this. You don't want too much nutmeg because you don't 
want to taste it and say, oh, nutmeg. Right. It has to be subtle. So now what we do, I separate the floweret this way. This is really hot. And I turn them back the other way so that we have a nice gratin. This is good, too, actually. I'm going to cut that piece here. Mm -hmm. And I'll add it to it in the corner here. And what I want to put, however, on top of it, I put a little bit of Swiss cheese grated before you put the sauce, huh? Maybe a dash of salt and, I think, and pepper. I think we can put some cream in here. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think you have it. Yes, I have a little bit of cream for you. Well, that's pretty yeah, thick. Yeah, because it's a bit too thick, right? Mm-hmm. You want this? So, my gratin is ready. Do you want that to come to a boil first? It's come to a boil. It's already okay. boiled. So we are ready. We are ready. Do we have a big spoon? Yeah. That's a good idea, putting the cheese on there. Then they'll go cheese on top of the sauce. You know what? We need all that sauce. People often, they don't put enough, you know? Yes. This would be going with a kind of a lean meal, like just a roast or broiled chicken or lamb. The gratin is always welcome at my house. Julia, you put some cheese on top? Mm -hmm. I think so. I think I like the Swiss cheese on this. Now you want to cook your gratin on a jelly roll pan or a cookie sheet on top because if it's spilled over and the heat transfer is better and it's easier to get in and out of the oven. Now you can, get, on that you can get this ready several hours ahead. In this case, because it's all hot, you could probably put it quite a distance under a hot broiler and it would heat the whole thing. Oh, yes. But if we're cold, you'd have to put it in the oven at about a in the hot oven. 375 yeah. oven. It'd take you about 20 minutes for the to cook through and the oh, top wait. to brown. I'm going to put it in the oven. So it's a, it's a good dish to have, mainly because you can get it done ahead of time. It's, it's really delicious, I think. Yes. And Very old-fashioned. That, that time, maybe we'll start this. You think the carrots are going to cook a bit longer, right? Yes, I'd so Maybe we sh should start the carrots first. Carrot first. So what I have to do in there is to put some water. What happened there is that you want to glaze the carrot and the turnips. So to achieve that first, they have to cook. So you put about just enough water. It doesn't even come to the top. In this, you put a little bit of salt that you're going to need. Then we put a little bit of sugar. And that makes for the caramelized for the glaze. Caram yes. And a piece of butter. You want to cook your carrot three or four minutes ahead and then add the turnips. What happens is that as soon as they are tender enough, you remove the lid, then it boils down, and by the time you are left with the sugar and the butter, it's going to caramelize and start glazing the vegetable. Mm -hmm. Well, this is boiling very nicely. Now for about four or five minutes, I'm going to add the turnips, put it back, and cover it and cook it until it's just a bit firm but starting to get tender. You may have seen this ugly looking thing in your grocery and wondered what in the world it was. It's a celery root or a celery hack. It makes an absolutely lovely salad. You can cook it and mix it with mashed potatoes. But you have to peel it. Yes, but first, you know, while I'm going to peel that, I'm looking at my carrot here. You see they are tender. This is tender too, and basically there is no more juice left or very little. So now I cook it without the lid meaning that it's going to reduce more and more and eventually start glazing. So I'll keep an eye on it while doing this. First, the, the part of the root here, you have to cut a fair amount of it, you know? It smells wonderfully of celery. If you do it ahead of time like this, you have to rub it with lemon because it discolors rapidly. It's a hard skin. I have a mm -hmm. very sharp knife and you have to so I'm gonna rub watch your finger. With lemon. Now we have to cut it in very thin matchstick sizes. One of the easiest ways is probably doing it in the food processor, right? And this, that type of blade that I use here is a type, a shredder, a type of shredder. And it works actually quite well. That's, and it's that's of course, the easiest thing, easiest you go right thing in here. here. We'll give you and this. If you do it ahead, be sure and put a little lemon juice and salt on it. It is good that they marinate a little bit ahead so that the celery soften, you know? But then you have the final sauce, and I'm going to make a mixture with a bit of mustard. I think that my 
carrot and turnip oh, are about right. That's, that's lovely. And they're beautiful. Lovely. Those you can do ahead and reheat. That I'm looks beautiful. To, I'm going to stop it right there. I'm going to put in some sour cream. Okay. You want a little whisk? Mm-hmm. And there's a little mayonnaise, because you like mayonnaise, too, so we have a yeah, bit of know. everything. A good idea. Now, put her in. I think we're going to need some pepper in there, though. White or black? No, That's... you like black. Let's have yeah. black. OK. Pepper is pepper. Pepper is pepper. So, we toss it. And again, as you mentioned before, it's a good idea to do that a little ahead so they have time then to... It, it softens and sort of all the flavors blend together. OK. Well, you want to well, taste let's it? Let's have now? a little taste. I'm going to glab it with my impeccably clean finger. I think a little bit of salt, right? Mm, yes, definitely. You want to there give we me are. some there? No, no right. this we will say this is sat for two hours. OK. Perfectly seasoned, absolutely delicious. Ready to serve. I have beautiful Boston lettuce here that we can put around. Do you want to ladle it in the middle? All right. And maybe I'll do a little decoration with a tomato. Well, that would on top. be nice. I'll do a bit of a, a rose with the tomato skin. So what you want to do is to take the end like this to have a base, and then after to start slicing around, and you want to cut in a jigsaw fashion with your knife so that you have a bit of a texture here, you know, and you do two strips. Now, what's wonderful about you, Jacques, that you've worked all over the world and you've picked up all kinds of wonderful tricks. Yes. But you are sharing with us, which oh, is yes. very nice. And I enjoy sharing it with you and all my friends. So on that base here, where you have the first one, then you can do like a crown like this. You see that old? Mm -hmm. And then on the second one, you can roll it into a tighter scroll like this to put in the middle of it. Here we are. Mm. And that's nice. And you have a little touch. You have a little know? hole here for yes. it. Yes, little touch that you put right on top here. That's it. OK. That is lovely. The glazed vegetables are ready, you know? Look at that. That's beautiful. You want to put a bit of chive on top of this? Yes, why not? Then we have our gratin. And now, the pièce de résistance is our gratin of cauliflower. Oh, it's bubbling nicely. It's beautiful. And I think it's done. Well, you that's lovely. It? And you don't want to overcook it. You know, you can get some terrible steam table cauliflower that is just awful and has a bad smell. But they should cook it just until it's done, and it's perfectly delicious. It's worth eating only vegetable. If you want to be a vegetarian, though, you have great dishes that we enjoy making for you today. And they're, they're beautiful, and they please anybody. Yes. And I know they'll please you, so make them right away, and you'll love them. Happy cooking. And bon appétit. Presentation of KQED San Francisco.